Hey there, this is Arash. Hey there. Hey there. Okay. How do I start a video? And today I'm doing a video about how. <laughs> this is so much harder than it looks. <laughs> ah, okay. Hey there, this is Arash. I'm the host of. Hey there, this is Arash. I'm a. Welcome. This is Arash. Am I even recording? <laughs> hey there, I'm Arash. I am a photographer based in Southern California. I'm a portraitist at heart, but a marketing, tourism, and lifestyle photographer by trade. And on today's video, I'm going to talk about navigating self-doubt. Navigating self-doubt. You know, that the first title of this video was Dodging Self-Doubt. And I recognized that there is no dodging it. <laughs> because what you don't see, viewer, is that uh, maybe I'll include some cuts of it. I started and restarted doing this video like 15 times. Uh, you are at this exact second watching me navigate self-doubt in real time. <laughs> uh, my earliest win at anything creative and self-affirming was winning an all-school speech contest when I was in fifth grade. Uh, that was like two or three years after I learned how to speak English. So early on in my life, utilizing the English language, especially in front of people and like really being vulnerable and putting myself out there was something that was rewarded. And I felt like I was like pretty good at. Um, then I got into podcasting and I got more into like behind the camera stuff. And uh, I, I've lost some of the mechanics about how that process works. So when I attempted doing this very first video, I actually kind of fell apart and I had to start all over. And I'm still figuring out what the system is. Uh, I over explained things. I started to stress out. And it really brought me back to this very important realization that when we're experiencing self-doubt, it's not about the mechanics. It's like a deeply ingrained sense of uncertainty that comes from systems upon systems of insecurity and the things, you know, crap that we've grown up with, childhood issues. <laughs> um, and the reason that I changed the title from dodging to navigating is that I, I got to tell you, whatever you want to call it, first doubt, imposter syndrome, um, writer's block, it's the same crap. It's all the same thing. You can't dodge it. And I don't think it ever 100% goes away. It's like this sneaky little troll that kind of like, like pops up at the most inopportune moment when you really think you're like plowing through and doing really great. And then all of a sudden this thing pops up and it makes you wonder if you should be doing any of this at all. I'm having thoughts about like who, who the heck are you to be getting on camera and like giving advice to people about how to navigate self doubt. If you yourself are literally navigating it as we speak. Um, I think an argument could be made that I am exactly the person that you want to be hearing from. I don't know about you, but like if I'm going to get like training at the gym and the guy has like an eight pack and he's like got zero percent body fat and he's been an athlete his entire life. I'm kind of looking at him and going like, bro, you don't know my life. <laughs> but if it's like somebody who's like gone through it themselves and like. You know, it's like, like, looks pretty damn excellent, but also looks like they've eaten a cheesecake at some point in their lives. I'm more likely to trust that person. And that is the lovely, beautiful thing about the internets is that we can find people that, that connect with us more personally and more deeply. And I can assure you, every artist that I have interviewed over the past decade, everyone I've spoken with, everyone I've shot portraits of, everyone I've gotten to know intimately, every single one of them 
is navigating self-doubt on some level all the time. It's just that the ones that succeed are the ones that have put in the practice of how to gracefully step over first doubt. That's the reminder that I have that pops up randomly in my phone actually. Gracefully step over first doubt. And when I call it first doubt, by the way, I say that because usually it happens when I take on a new project and I'm super excited by it. And then the instant I sit down to do it, I fall apart with insecurity. <laughs> uh, kind of like this video. Every one of us comes up with like our own systems of how to navigate first doubt. Making art, making art can be a brutal experience. I can tell you that for me, virtually every time I pick up a new project, whether it's a new photo shoot, it's a new gig I'm working, um, if, if it's a fashion shoot, uh, more recently a music video, um, I go through this process and it's the same every single time. <laughs> every single time this process happens. Uh, at first, I'm super excited about it. I'm like, yes, we're going to do this new thing. I have all these ideas. It's going to be great. Um, and then we do it. And in the middle of doing it, I turn into, why was I stupid enough to think I could do this? I am a moron. I have dragged all of these well-meaning people who are here to help me into this crap, into this quagmire. Now we're here late at night. We're still shooting. I don't know what I want. I can't believe I'm such a mess. Uh, you know what? God, I should have just like I should have just gone to school and been an engineer like my dad really wanted me to be. Uh, my parents are right. What was wrong with me? All of this is happening, right? Um, and then at some point, some little thing clicks like, oh, oh, this is the reason I was doing this because of this one, this is this, this one image. Uh, and then it, and then it gets fun again. <laughs> uh, it happens to me on photo shoots all the time. I start out excited about the shoot. Then, uh, very quickly, <laughs> devolve, devolve, what is the word? Devolve, de, 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 de crash. Uh, into complete uncertainty and insecurity and um, then like I get this like one really amazing shot and I get this feeling like oh oh the job is done now we're just gonna play and that's when like all the fun amazing stuff comes out of it uh, on this music video that I'm editing right now I'm having that experience like every scene and there's like a whole bunch of scenes, but every time I edit a scene, I'm going through this like this roller coaster of emotions. It is brutal. Only an insane person would continue to do this to themselves. And that's the thing. The the first doubt, the imposter syndrome, the writer's block, all that, it never goes away. You just figure out a way to navigate around it. Today what I did is I did the first take of this video and then I went for a walk. And just cleared my head like let's uh, let's start over and I came up with the idea of writing my notes and taping it right under the camera which is <laughs> dumb so how to navigate first out well, I'm sorry but the, the answer is kind of like you figure it out there isn't an exact system you just kind of keep doing it until the the fear has less power over you and I think the important part is not to like power through, like not to try to beat it up. But again, like the phrase that I use is gracefully stepping over first out. In my head, the image that I'm seeing is like, have you ever seen those movies or cartoons where like a big fight breaks out and like somebody who's just standing there watching it just steps over the people that are like on the ground wrestling? That's how I imagine myself, gracefully stepping over first out. And once you get past that line, this is the important thing that I've observed from a decade of photographing and interviewing artists. You have the audacity to put yourself out there. You look at all the other people who are doing better work and all the stuff that's happening out there and all the technology that you can't keep up with. And at some point after you've had the clarity, after you've beaten yourself up enough, ideally you get faster and faster at it, which is where I've gotten. Uh, and you just really just decide to have the audacity to put yourself out there. The audacity to think your voice matters. The audacity 
that the world needs your art, your photos, your writing, your film, whatever it is. You just, you have the, the audacity to put yourself out there. Uh, and that's the part that I am currently practicing. And one of the ways that I do that, uh, it just a personal takeaway, is that uh, if you have an iPhone or you know, I guess any smartphone, you can put a random reminder in there. That's what I do. A random reminder that pops up like every three days at I don't know what time. And it just says, have the audacity to step over first doubt gracefully and put yourself out there. That's today's video. That's how I navigate first doubt. I hope it gave you a little inch of inspiration. And what I'll probably do is do this video again a couple of months in the future, but you know, better. <laughs> but right now, what I'm doing is I'm accepting that this is good enough and I have the audacity to put this out there for you to listen, for you to check it out. My name again is Arash. I am a photographer based in Southern California. Uh, you can find me at mrarash.com. That's M-R-A-R-A-S-H.com. The links are going to be obviously in the thing. I don't know why I'm explaining that to you. Uh, you can follow me on all the things at Mr. Arash. So. The most fascinating thing is happening. This is a topic that I have opined about openly and I almost never get tired of and I've talked about a thousand times and my mind has gone completely blank right now which is like it's fascinating to observe it's literally watching a trauma response happen in my body as I'm watching it unfold. <laughs> mm.